What you're about to see is the story of making Mandela. It is the tale of how a group of people was tasked with creating a tribute to Nelson Holihlahla Mandela. It is about the agonizing choices they made, the number of people they involved, and ultimately, the love and respect they were able to show in creating the definitive statue of the nation's father and the world's icon. For all involved, it was an honor, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, a labor of love and immense joy. Throughout the almost year-long journey, the spirit of Madiba inspired everyone who worked on the project. But a sense of urgency started gripping the team towards the end, not because of the installation date, but because of the fading spirit of Madiba himself, who in a strange twist of fate, never saw his image in bronze stand majestically at the Union buildings. But that is starting at the end. Let us rather begin at the beginning. It is the 7th of June 2013. Tensions are running high in Pretoria. Sculptors Ruhan van Fieren and Andre Prinsloo have drawn daggers with Goketo Growth's project manager, Sarah Haynes. It's the final day of approvals on the clay figure the company has been working on for months, and Sarah is not happy. That was the head that was approved, and we were happy with that. Yeah, but it's not, it, you know, it's, uh, it's not a case of it's, you know, yeah. what was approved when. I mean, the, yeah. I just think that the likeness, for whatever reason, is better here than, than yeah. there. The, 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 that looks, that's horrible, that has to go. I cannot have even Dali, let alone the minister, come here and see that. Otherwise, I'm going to cancel everything now. Sarah, Sarah basically what's yeah. happened is that at the moment, what, what, um, Ruan and myself yeah. are at loggerheads with each other. Yeah. Since I can remember, it's, I've been told not to make teeth ever. But we did agree on, and I'm totally in agreement with you, we did agree on that slight smile. A consensus, what do you think? I need input here. I actually don't care who said what, who, yeah. who thought what, but who I whatever. It doesn't work. I want a solution now. Yeah. Two, hours. two hours. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you decapitate him. In December 2012, the presidency of South Africa tasked the Department of Arts and Culture to commission an iconic sculpture. The department contracted heritage design company Kogeta Growth to develop a bronze. The posture was first designed by Dali Tambo and then developed from a clay figure into a towering tribute to Mandela. Today, the minister is due to give his blessings to the clay model. But first, Dali has Hi. to give the nod. <laughs> okay, so we've got a little tooth. I'm a bit worried about the smile. I'd say almost. Okay. I, I think you're, you're like 90% there. Before the Minister of Arts and Culture arrives, officials from his department precede him, eager to see what Mandela looks like. We're at that stage where we wanted your comments. The, the stance we hope you'll approve. It's open-heartedness, it's mm. peaceful, it's mm. Uh, mm. Uh, you know, encompassing of the nation. As state president, uh, and in front of union buildings, mm -hmm. he should represent that unity. This would be the size of a normal person next to the statue. Sure. We found a great location, Chief. It's right in the middle of union buildings, but on the lower level, okay. uh, where the Herzog statue is currently. We also felt that we needed space around it because it's going to become a place of pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. You know, where large groups of people are going to come. You're yeah. going to have busloads of people mm -hmm. and wanting to stand around. What is it that you want to remember on that day? Well, I think we want in him to remember his life. I think he's giving love in this dance. I think there's a lot of warmth and love coming from it. 
I would seek to defend this stance because I think balance-wise, it's got beauty. I think it's got a natural warmth and encompassment and, and fatherliness. Oh, really? So we did agonize, <laughs> we that, did agonize uh, uh, yes. you know, it, should yes. he be in a bit of a dancing Dance. thing? Yes. Should it be the fist? Yeah. Should it be, you know, different mm. things? And uh, There was even discussion about him as a boxer. The same way I think the Madiba statue is going to talk to future generations because of this action. Yeah. It's not, and it's not to be funny about bound in time, but the other actions might be bound in time. This is not bound in time yeah. when you look at it this way. The Minister of Arts and Culture, Paul Mashatile, is the last to view on the day, silently appraising the figure that rises above even his tall frame. That was the original Marquette. So they've worked from that. What's beautiful about this particular pose, Mr. Minister, is that Union Buildings itself does that semicircle. And he's right in the middle, further down the steps. When you're looking like this, you see Union Buildings ab above him. So there's a lot of symmetry. It's quite beautiful. It's quite a tight schedule, um, because as you can imagine, uh, it's quite a lot of work to do in the six months, five months we've got now. I want to show the president and deputy president, but they may not be able to come here. Yes. Uh, can you guys uh, help me with that? What can we do? We can, we can transport it. We can transport it to um, the presidency. On the day, the team takes the sculpture to the union buildings for approval. South Africa wakes up to sobering news about Mandela. Former President Nelson Mandela has been admitted to a Pretoria hospital in a serious but stable condition. The presidency says in a statement Madiba is suffering from a recurring lung infection. Presidential spokesperson Mac Maharaj. This morning at about 1.30 a.m. his condition deteriorated and he was transferred to a Pretoria hospital. The former president is receiving expert medical care and doctors are doing everything possible to make him comfortable and better. By the time the sculpture arrives at the Union buildings, the public had already wished him a speedy recovery. Mandela's last major public appearance was in July 2010 at the final of the FIFA World Cup Soccer City Stadium in Johannesburg. Since then, he's spent his time between Johannesburg and his ancestral village of Kunu in the Eastern Cape. The team was sworn to secrecy and are told to bring Mandela discreetly for the president to view. No member of the public must catch even a glimpse of him. That afternoon, final approval is granted. It is six months to go until the unveiling. Nelson Mandela is undoubtedly the most recognized figure the world over. This was not always so. After his imprisonment in 1964 on Robben Island, his words and his image were made legal, effectively banned. But in a strange irony, this only added to his mystique as activists and artists found other ways to graphically represent Mandela and use him as a rallying cry. It's very difficult in our cyber age to think that as recently as 1990, uh, 23 years ago, you know, we didn't have any of these devices. We barely had mobile phones, we had bricks, we had no internet, we had nothing really in, in terms of those propaganda tools we now completely take for granted. Nothing could go viral in quite that way. And so what was so brilliant was that graphics came in, the graphic t-shirt, the graphic flag, uh, these, and he lent himself so beautifully to that representation. Uh, the use just of black on white of those essential uh, kind of characteristics of his face, which were very, and uh, you know, right to the end, very, very strong. Um, they, they just played so beautifully in, into representing him as he is. Veteran journalist John Snow was reporting live outside the prison gates. Like thousands of others, he was craning to catch a glimpse of a man he had not seen in his lifetime. We had no idea what he looked like, absolutely none at all. All we had was that old image of 27 years earlier, the boxer, the, the very black, bushy hair, the center parting, brawny man. And I suppose we were looking for an older version of that. The Goketsu crew asked people around Johannesburg what they had been expecting Nelson Mandela to look like when he first came out of prison. I'd never seen a picture of Mandela. He was, we thought he was, I don't know, a scary monster. The first image I saw uh, was the shop down, the newsagent down the road. 
And I saw this picture on the Sunday Times. I said, who is this Taiwanese person? And why is he on the front page of the newspaper? I remember we were gathered in one of um, my school principal's house. They had a TV in a veranda and everybody was watching. I thought, that's the man, that's Mandela. He's going to run this country and he's going to take it from where it was to where it's going to be. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, taking his first steps. They leave a victim of that prison. His first public appearance in three decades. A lot of people were surprised, but not perhaps pleasantly surprised in that he was looking handsome and very dignified and someone to look up to even before he says anything. Most people were crying, and, uh, but it was the tears of joy of seeing the Liberator walk out, marching out with his feast. It was completely overwhelming. I wept, I cried. I mean, it, it, was, it was, why was it so overwhelming? I, I think because by then, we understood what he'd been through, and we understood the way he was going to come out. It was clear he was not going to war. He was going to peace. How best to capture this man of peace was the biggest challenge facing the team. Heated discussions were held between Dali Tambo, Sarah Haynes, and the sculptors at the Koketa offices in Johannesburg. I think the government would like this to be the world's biggest um, and the world's finest, the defining sculpture of Madiba, done by his own people, um, uh, hosted at Union Buildings, um, the seat of, of power, and of him as our first state president. So he needs to have the dignity and yet the humanity that is so associated with him. In a sense, this is the gift of the government to the nation in terms of Madiba. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, this is the nation's gift in terms of public memory, that this is how we want to remember you. Mm -hmm. I think his age, we try to capture around about the year 1994, 1996. Mm -hmm. I can see it's almost him, but it's not him. Mm -hmm. Because I always get to this point, don't I, Sarah, where I can't tell you what it is, but there's something yeah. that uh, is still not quite there. Powerful man, strong man. Yes, strong man. He saves people's lives. Like a chief, he's a king. He was a father, he was like our Moses in the Bible. Like kindness personified, like if you, if you could make a person out of kindness, that's what they'd look like. What I guess I'm worried about is this is Last Chance Cafe, and yeah. no one's writing anything down, so um, <laughs> are, we, are we totally clear about yes. all the things Let me that just grab are going to be changed? Yeah. So from the front, it's not that pronounced, but as soon as you look at it from the side, oh, he's ending up with these very protruding teeth. The smiling Madiba is the one that everybody recognizes. Mm. But it's whether he's smiling with teeth or not. Ah, uh, that smile, to me, was so good. Too. So it was always like a Mona Lisa smile. You know, she knew something that nobody else knew. The, the only problem is that if you have his smile too big, if he smiles, his eyes tend to close up on the sculpture itself, and we didn't want that. So it's a half smile, a half, half yeah. face. Because um, we had actually asked you for a smile with no teeth. That's correct. And I so that the eyes it. are open. That's correct. There was this sense of peace about the smile that has no teeth. With these eyes, what are you going to do? Actors, when they lie, are bad actors, and you can see it. So the minute you lose the eyes, the minute you then you stop believing them, the minute you stop believing them, you get bored. You never stop believing him. And I don't know how to tell someone how to draw those eyes. Because I don't see those as his eyes yet. Almond looking like type of eyes with uh, hazel pupils or something like that, yeah. He's, a, he's dark chocolate brown. No. Dark, no? Eh? Caramel. Car no, caramel. I'm no, caramel. No. You explaining him away, I totally wouldn't actually okay. explain him. In days gone by, a figure this size would have taken six to eight months to make. Sculptors would pack clay laboriously onto a steel structure and then model it. 
the advent of modern technologies allows us to make sculptures much faster. In Cape Town, the foundry director explains how the 2.2 meter figure transforms into the 9 meter bronze sculpture. What we have happening in the background here is that a CNC three-axis router is busy cutting out various profiles of the sculpture. The sculpture was originally scanned with a handheld scanner in Pretoria on site where the artists built the piece. They built a 2.2 meter sculpture which was now scanned and amplified in the software to a 9 meter. Of course we can't cut a 9 meter in one piece so that's cut in segments on the CNC router and so they can cut up to about 270 mils per slice. So it's extremely accurate. If I put a 1 mil bit in there it will cut 1 millimeter accuracy. As the face of that image there gets green, it's where the cutting path has already been. On the foam blocks, we probably have about two to three hundred different sections, panels, that will all be put together from the casting process. I ran myself for old-fashioned, so this is a bit new to us, but it saved almost three months' work on the armature and the, and the foam, and there's no way that you can get it to this detail. This is probably the most critical part because the face of any sculpture is probably what gives you the image, which has got to be true to what the, the artists are wanting and what has been demanded of them. Most actors would love to have everything that he had. I mean, he was handsome, he was charming, he was intelligent, he was erudite. I mean, he had everything. You know, had he not have got involved in politics and had I have known him in those days, maybe I could have talked him into being an actor. <laughs> the scale of the work is just so much different. Uh, keeping in perspective, when we work on a smaller piece, you're always close to the sculpture and you, you're there. But when we work on a big piece like this, we've constantly got to step back. He's a very tall and imposing figure, broad-shouldered, very straight, quite a military bearing, in fact. The feeling of you've got to pinch yourself to make sure that it's real. Um, both Ruan and myself have said that constantly. We remind each other, this is actually now happening. It's now starting. It's an absolute honor. But I don't think uh, Madiba set out to create a celebrity out of himself. I think it happened as a consequence of what he came to represent, how he carried himself, and at that time, the direction the world was taking. What I'm doing now is getting some detail into it and if there are mistakes, like in this particular case, the fingers were a little bit thin, we had to build them up. We correct all the mistakes over here. And how you make that little circle, how you create that little circle within the eye, it's very important and where he will look eventually, what, whether he will look in the middle distance or whether he will physically look down or far off in the distance. Although known internationally for his flamboyant shirts, the decision was made to keep Mandela's clothes pattern-free. Out of interest, members of the public were asked how they would dress the sculpture. And I think for a statesman to, to dress like that in a fashion sense is incredible. Like it's, it's usually like blue and trustworthy colours and there he was in these wild shirts. Uh, because that man was a leader, they are supposed to give him a, a trousers or something to wear. Or even an overall. Uh, it was more about the comfort. Yes. <laughs> to show that, look, I am here. I'm here to do a job, but it doesn't matter how I'm dressed. Everybody's holding their breath while the head tries to find its final resting place. This is the first time the sculptors are able to check the figure at this height. They focus on the areas below the chin, the nose, and underneath the arms, as this will be what visitors will see when they look up. Until the head's up and until it's balanced, it's nerve-wracking, but it's, it's very exciting. So far, so good. The final choice on his stance had been made, but the team had often wondered what South Africans would have wanted to see. I would picture him with my hand up high and then looking up in the sky. Something like this. In, in his boxing pose? Madiba dance. The Madiba dance. Oh, I'd love him to be dancing. Yeah. Thank you, babe. But anything, actually. I mean, the, we've seen so many different photos of him and from sad faces to happy faces, it's all... It's all beautiful, like, especially for South Africans. There's nothing you can do to... You, you'll never get it wrong, put it that way. Back in Pretoria, the Coquetso team held numerous meetings with members of the Presidency Steering Committee. 
heritage and environmental impact assessments were debated. Logistics for installation and the unveiling of the new sculpture thrashed out. It was also an opportunity to keep the committee abreast of progress to date. The, the physical bronze figure is in full-on production at three foundries throughout South Africa. There's just a couple of um, pictures uh, taken in the foundries. In order to cast the figure, it's, it's, it's now a jigsaw puzzle. It's 198 pieces of bronze. The figure will be welded together on site and it'll be ready to, in, to be installed on the base on the, on the 9th. Of, um, of December. The Union Buildings is now a national heritage site, symbolizing national unity after a deeply divided past. It was soon to be the home of the world's tallest statue of Nelson Mandela. But where exactly should he be placed? Talks revolved around putting the sculpture where former Prime Minister J.B.M. Herzog was standing. On an axis of honor that runs from the streets of Pretoria up to the presidential seats of power at the buildings itself. Um, I think it's a good space. I, I definitely think it's a possibility. It's actually a lovely space because it's got such wonderful spatial qualities to it. To move the existing statue, I don't think would be too much of an issue. A full heritage impact assessment was carried out and included a public participation process. The study identified another suitably commemorative point on the grounds of the Union buildings to where the statue of Herzog was relocated. There's a, an article which uh, Kruger wrote in response to Herzog, who didn't want Louis Boerta's statue erected here at all. An, oh, I suppose it's an open letter, indicating that basically that you should be a person of great standing. There can't just be statues of anybody. <laughs> it's an interesting yeah. point, you know, about also the layers of history. Mandela is in pieces again. Foundry members will now divide the large body parts into smaller sections. The panels have been divided into sizes that are very comfortable for the, for the foundry to be able to cast. Every one of these panels is going to now get cut with a grinder into these sections that have their little crosses on them. Every, every panel is numbered and photographed, so when they take that, the panel and they paint a wax into it, they will inscribe that same number into the wax so that they know how to put the sculpture back together like a puzzle. Making a silicone rubber mold is one of the first steps of the lost wax method of bronze casting. Oh, I'm feeling very proud, very proud. And the, what I'm doing now is the first layer. We used to put this first layer on the sculpture. This first layer is very important for us just because it's the one who picks up the details. That's why we are applying this rubber very careful to make sure that this rubber is picking up all the details. We are not allowed to miss even a piece of this sculpture. Then after putting this first layer, we continue putting other layers until to the recommended layers one to five or one to three. I'm thinking that this guy is going to speak just because it looks like, it looks like a real person. <laughs> Once the rubber has hardened, artisans use the little nibs to pry the pieces open to retrieve the blue mold. The key system is made with um, little dovetails which they split in half so that this mold can be opened up so that they can paint wax in it in the wax process. When they painted this, um, the rubber with, with the wax, They've done a very nice job in collecting up all that detail of the eyes, pupils, it's all there. The thickness of this wax is quite nice, it's about four mils, or it's about three and a half to four mils, which is a really nice, nice for this face. It's very exciting. This is wonderful because ultimately this is what the sculpture is all about, is this, the face. This is what makes Madiba. And to see that um, what we did in the polyurethane and the foam, and then it's been captured in wax, it's wonderful to see it. I mean, it's the best one I've seen. Totally. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so once the, once the wax panels have been made to the right thickness, then what they do is they do a whole gating system inside those panels. This whole construction is designed in such a way so that when the metal is poured the metal will flow down, the main sprue, it will feed in through these feeders into that cavity that's created by all these feeding tubes. The metal will then fill up slowly through this cavity and the air will travel out through these high pointed vents on the tops of the, of the, of the casting itself. 
In the lost wax method, the wax must give way for the bronze. Each wax part of Madiba is therefore covered in two to three layers of ceramic powder. The hardened ceramic shell will become the casing that will hold the molten metal once the wax melts away. A week later when the shells are dried, the wax is boiled out of the casing at a very high temperature, leaving a hollow shell into which the bronze will be poured. Finally, bronze casting begins. The casting area is where the real magic happens. To begin, metal bars are heated up to 1,170 degrees Celsius. This lost wax method of bronze casting has hardly changed over more than 5,000 years. At the same time, the ceramic shells into which the metal is poured are heated up to 950 degrees Celsius. They are heated up for an hour, just below the temperature of the molten bronze. The shells are placed in a fluidized sand bed to stabilize them and retain their shape. The bronze is ready to be poured. The molten metal flows into the shells like water. Surprisingly, the inside of the shells are not solid. The bronze merely creates a layer three to five millimeters thick. The shells are then pulled out of the sand and cold water is sprayed evenly on them. They cool off before workers chisel away every inch of the ceramic shell and any excess gating to reveal the cast bronze section underneath. Handy though his handsomeness was, uh, the truth is it was the spirit, it was what he said. It was forgiveness, it was reconciliation. In, in, in a moment when he could have said to the ramparts boys, let's fire. You know, this is what made Mandela, not his height, not his beauty, not his bearing, but his spirit. In a media saturated world, Mandela's height and good looks embellished his message. Tall, dark, handsome, and disarmingly charming, and his candid expression of the ANC's long standing policy of forgiveness and reconciliation disarmed even hardened racists. Okay, I'm the HOT of this department, I can, you know, head of the department, and this is the fettling department where we do the assembling of the sculpture, working off all the detail, putting detail back onto the sculpture. Like I told the guys, I asked them in the week, did you see the new Nelson Mandela sculpture? And nobody say, no, we didn't saw the sculpture. Because you guys is working on the new one. A big honor to work on the sculpture. And the sculpture must be perfect. One day I must show my kids also. I work on that father of the nation. Bronze sculpture, when well maintained, can last forever. Bronze is noble because it is man and nature creating heritage tourism out of history. Crafting stories that will be told 300 years from now. Yeah, it's a history for me because I wasn't there at the time of Tata, so I'm here now. And then I did a special job for us. So now I do the fettling to make to make details back because it was cut and then we put plate and then we put it back. So the guys were working like a team. If I say come to help me, he's coming just we help and then we make the job right. So yeah, I'm working for details. That details is very expensive, so we must be careful that time we're working for, for details. Because I want to make sure it's, it's fine. They I'm very happy for this one. This is my dad, this is my palm. So I'm, I'm working nicely for this. With only a couple of days left before Mandela's send-off to Gauteng, all sections are transported to a different warehouse, where final assembly and patina work will be done. Oh, 
Two tons of bronze is supported by a carefully engineered and complex internal lattice work of stainless steel to ensure its sustainability against gravity and nature. There's a very complicated internal structure inside that sculpture. That internal structure is tied in right throughout the whole sculpture. It's a massive lattice of stainless steel. It's a very high-grade stainless steel that's running through the sculpture. So, yeah, the sculpture will never fall over or anything like that. What was wrong? They battled to get the alignment with the torso, the bottom okay, of the torso, yes. and the alignment of the, of the legs. Yeah. When they lift it with a crane like this, all the weight of the sculpture is on the tip toes, like a ballet dancer. So it's right on this tip, and obviously the bronze on its own like that won't be able to support it. So that's why they're bracing it to spread the weight up to the two feet. Even if it pivots on the one point, the weight is spread to that point at the top over there as well. Rather do it like this, and get it done, get it safe, than the other way around, the whole thing collapsing. I was saying to Sarah, my one regret is that uh, we were asked not to design the shirt. Yes. And that would have allowed so much beautiful well, detail. Can you imagine you know? that? Become. But I think the sculpture has become, in, in, in its simplicity, it's almost become the shirt and the pants. Yes. It's become very abstract. Absolutely. It's not, yeah. it, it's not the total it. realistic figures that's of sculpture. Yes. yes, the head and the face, that, yeah. that's it. Yeah. But it's become almost a simplistic abstract yes. shape yes. within the sculpture. And, and that's I love nice. I like it very much. It's beautiful. I really do. Yeah. And congratulations for not doing too many folds yes. on the trousers. <laughs> a former bodyguard was relating a story of how um, he had frequent meetings with Walter Sisulu. Then after a while, pulled together his bodyguards and said to them, I think there's something wrong happening in Walter's house. And uh, the bodyguards were like, uh, what is it? What's, what do you think is going on? He says, no, even his clothes are not being ironed these days. And what had actually happened was Sisulu's son, um, Zolake had bought his father linen suits, which were fashionable at the time, but because Madiba knew nothing about linen and the fact that it was a fashion trend at the time, he thought there was everything wrong with it, you know? So he didn't have that, like, fashion sense. I talked with Mac Maharaj about being in prison, and he talked to me about showering with Mandela in cold water, about the humiliation about the way in which, when their families came to visit, in order to press their trousers and try and look smart, because they only came once every six months, they had to put them under the mat under the door so that people walking over them would press the trousers. And um, he said what a proud thing it was to be allowed to resist, to be allowed to battle against it day after day. And when one was down, another would pick them up. And when he was down, they would pick him up. One week to go. Officials from the Department of Arts and Culture come for the final approval. Beautiful, beautiful. I feel like crying. I know. <laughs> Me too. I've, I got emotional. <laughs> you kind of feel other generations won't have lived during his time. And it'll mean something different to them. You know, if you were born in, say, four years, and so you weren't alive during the time of Madiba. 
I think the statue will have a symbolism for yeah. the next generation. Austerity. Yeah. Majestic. Mm. Mm. So they're busy patina in him, and uh, uh, that's doing the colouring. So you'll see that um, they've done the face in gold, and they're busy just about to do the hair. The raw bronze is treated with acid chemicals applied with heat, which allows for the creation of various tones and colours on the statue. The shirt, that green that you see, is the patina. Normally he would be in that gold that's up there, but as you can see, they're using a green and bringing the bronze through. And, but gradually, not once again a straight line into the shirt going into that colour and the arms going from the pants to that colour. Um, oh, gosh, you mean he'll be black, green and gold? He'll be black. You know, one doesn't actually realise the enormity of it. I mean, obviously, the, the, it's, the, it's an honour and there is a fear that you won't be able to do him justice, uh, do the country justice. You do feel a sense of a burden on you. So I've been t t eating and sleeping and walking with Madiva for the past six months. As the final finishing touches were being made to the sculpture, the world reeled from the long-awaited news that Nelson Kholihlahla Mandela had passed away. Grey skies immediately settled in over the nation. Mandela's sculpture arrives in Pretoria the same day that his body comes to lie in state at the Union buildings. I can tell you that Mandela he was nice for each and every one. And uh, he was uh, the, like God living on earth, but spiritual and love each and every one. With peace and harmony, we lost Mr. Mandela forever and ever. Uh, this picture, when I look at this picture, I'll think about Mr. Mandela every time. And I'll never lose him. Amanda, away to South Africa. <laughs> bye bye. All that we've learned in Nelson Mandela, through Nelson Mandela, will live on. What I've learned from Nelson Mandela was to respect people and understand that the respect that I give is the respect that I will get back from my children to and the values and morals that he upheld. Long live Nelson Mandela. Rest in peace. South Africa queue to pay their final respects. Nelson Mandela's statue arrives at the Union buildings.
It's fantastic. It's goosebumps. Goosebumps stuff. And I, I don't think we've really stopped much to think about it. And now, especially at this time, you know, his body in here again to lie in state, and we're putting this up. It's, it's very surreal. So, uh, when we finished the sculpture, we heard the news our father has passed to away. I was hoping that when we finished the sculpture, our father is going to get better, but God has got his decision. But I feel happy to the people and that they are welcome to see him. So, it's a great moment for us. And then to say goodbye to our father. We, maybe we had a little bit of help from somewhere. Yes, <laughs> yeah, from up there. We, yes. yeah. I think uh, South Africa needed uh, a, uh, to be able to remember the legacy of Madiba, and it is good news at a time when the country is mourning. Um, it was also a challenging job, technically, and uh, I feel honoured to be part of it. Sometimes it gives me another impression, you see. Uh, my tears on my eyes, always coming and then thinking about the man. I, I was feeling it sometimes you can see the sculpture himself. And, uh, but now it's obvious, but we didn't plan that, and then this is happening on, on itself automatically. In African tradition, the mourning period lasts for 10 days. In a twist of fate, it was exactly 10 days between Mandela's passing and the unveiling of the sculpture on Reconciliation Day, a day after his burial in the Eastern Cape. It's, it's an exciting day for us. We've been working for more than a year now, and we want to give the union building a new meaning. We have decided to unveil it on uh, reconciliation day because uh, it's befitting with Tata's ideals of unity, of reconciliation, and that's why the president will unveil the statue today on reconciliation day. We have buried him yesterday, but he will rise again this morning at the Union Building forever. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I would like to now welcome the president of the Republic of South Africa. President Jacob Zuma and Mrs. Zuma. The president is going to do that, do that one first. Okay. I think it was overwhelming because I've, I've never seen anything like that, even anywhere in the world. It's big, it's strong, it's tall, and it's reconciling. It's Mandela. All those attributes that made him great, and it's fearless, and cannot be easily penetrated. It's Mr. Mandela with his hands open, beckoning to the nation to unite. That's my reaction. It's so peaceful. So it's saying, Let's be at peace within ourselves and yet let's unite. And I like the, you know, the expression on the face. That's the Madiba we know. And when you look at him, very reassuring, very welcoming, very protective, and also facing the direction of the future where the country should go. And we believe that uh, it was the most fitting tribute to Madiba to be there to symbolize the union uh, building, which today is a symbol of democracy and freedom, whereas all along it was a seat of oppression, apartheid, uh, discrimination. And I think there was a very grand end of a very painful week, but of, a, of, of the very tumultuous week, which actually where the nation was united in paying tribute to our greatest president. We've just laid him to rest yesterday, and the following day, Madiba rises. And for me, the most significant thing is about that Madiba will never die. Madiba will never disappear from our eyes, from our, from our minds, from our hearts. Mandela, Mandela, Mandela.
addressing all of us. He says, say, come. I was there when Mandela told us that uh, don't call me, I will call you. <laughs> it's no longer a feast, it shows that everybody's welcome. To see him here permanently in our hearts, reminding us of what he's done. And the image of Nelson Mandela will be, as, they, as the speaker said, he's at the center of power, he's at the center of the country. Uh, you know, in Corsa, we refer to certain people as Ukalaba Liban, meaning one with a very broad and wide shoulders. And you could, in a sense, refer to Nelson Mandela as Ukalaba Liban, to the extent that on his shoulders he was prepared to carry not only South Africa but the world. So those arms are welcoming, not only to us as South Africans, but to the world as a whole. The boxer, the lawyer, the revolutionary. The president still stands tall, dignified, compassionate and strong in public memory. Forevermore.